What's up guys, so I might be coming down with something, and actually I'm sure I'm coming down with something, so in the event that I don't feel like making videos later on in the week, I wanted to make a sort of a easier one, so I'm going to show you guys a little bit about what you can do with HP Tuner software. So I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown on this. Basically, I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that I've been messing with because people have often asked like what you can do and can't do with these and everything. But what I wanted to show you, first of all, when you get this and you're setting it up, the first thing you're going to do is create a file. And let's see if I can pull this up here. Basically what you've got here, where it says my black 97 and where it says my red 99 GDP, these are stock tunes and that's basically you're going to store the computer as is in here and you're not going to modify that file you're going to keep that file so that you can get back to stock numbers if you need to and um, you could also return it to stock if you wanted to other than that once you open a file the first thing you're going to do is read the computer and you're going to save it then the next thing i would suggest doing is because you need to know where you're starting is you're going to go into the other program that comes with it, which is this one right here, and you're just going to go out and do a data log. Now, I'll show you what a log file looks like, because I have quite a few. And this is basically going to show you, you know, second per second, everything that was happening that you, or at least that you have it set up to log during that drive. You can look at whether or not you've got KR, you can look at, um, what all the different sensors were reading, what speed you were at, what throttle position you were at. And then another cool feature is this is gonna give you graphs that are gonna tell you where on the tables you were and what numbers you saw and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna get into what these are good for, but they're good for a lot of different things. Once you've got that, you can use this information to start modifying. Now, that you're gonna do in this other program. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of some of the things that you can modify. Right here, you've got correction for speedometer where you can change sensor calibration, you can change the hardware, you can change the gear ratio and tire sizes. And this also is where you can change your speed limiter to whatever you want it to be. Um, you've also got under system, this is where you can control your fans and when they come on and off. You also have control over bats, then your AC controls. It also comes with some fuel system stuff, but on Grand Prix, there really isn't anything that you can do. Um, right here, where you're gonna see engine diag and transmission diag, that is stuff particularly pertaining to the onboard diagnostics. And that's pretty much where you can just go in and you can you see all the different codes that the computer can throw and you can change how it reports and what it reports and stuff like that. So that's really only for the check engine light. Then under trans, you've got a bunch of different things you can change here. You can actually change torque converter control in this table, and you can change your apply and release under normal and under performance. The duty cycle table, which I will tell you is, can be kind of strange to mess with. Um, torque management, in which you can disable or change the parameters to make it less aggressive or whatever you want to do there. Under engine, you can change the all kinds of things, the where the EGR works and doesn't work, what the idle set at, a lot of airflow modifiers, a lot of fuel modifiers, a lot of spark modifiers, and once again, torque management. In that, you even have supercharger stuff, you've got the abuse mode, you've got just general stuff. So that's most of the stuff that you're going to do. Then basically once you've made the changes you want to make, you just hook into the car again and you just write the file. And then the computer will now have these new numbers instead of the numbers that you originally had. So a few things that I would say for a fairly stock car or for someone who's just started messing with this that I would recommend changing. In here, fans for sure. And that's just because, you know, as you can see here, I keep my fan stuff set lower than stock because I run a lower thermostat and I want to keep it that cool. Um, vats, I generally take off of all of my cars. There's really not much else you need to mess much with there. Um, 
with transmission, this is where you'll see a huge amount of improvement on even stock cars. Getting rid of torque reduction will make the car more aggressive feeling, although it will be harder on the transmission. Um, the torque converter stuff is really it, very hard to understand. If you look at the table, you can kind of see you've got throttle position, you've got when it applies and releases in each gear, and then the vehicle speed at which that occurs. That can be really complicated to figure out, but there are some nasty weird places in there in the stock tuning that are worth straightening out. So that's worth messing with. Um, also under shift properties, if you go into shift time, you can reduce that to speed up shifts. You can also go in shift pressure and you'll have separate here for normal and performance and you can up that, which will make it shift harder. Um, those things you'll feel a definite difference in. Um, other than that, another thing that you may need to do is even on stock cars, like I said, is math calibration is a lot of times not perfect from the factory and you can use the data logging information to straighten that out to keep your fuel trims as close to zero as possible. You can also tweak the VE table here, which is your um, speed density, basically, tables for the using the map sensor. Then you've also got Spark, although it's stock, you're probably not gonna mess with this very much, but you can change how the, how the knock retard works. Um, but be careful with this because that is protecting your engine and if you screw it up and it lets it start knocking that can cost you an engine So other than that pretty much airflow and then the only other thing under fuel uh, Power enrichment is good to mess with because a lot of times you can you'll find That you're running a little leaner than you want to be at wide open throttle and you're getting some knock and you can actually up that some and wind up you know coming out with a little more power there too so any of that would also be worth messing with. Other than that, it's just a lot of different things uh, that you can mess with, but it's a pretty steep learning curve. But once you know how all of it works, it's great. If you don't want to deal with that though, you could always just pay someone to do it and come out fairly decently that way as well. Okay, so I'm looking at the data log now, and I'll show you guys what I'm looking at here, but there's a couple interesting things right off the bat. First of all, in this car, and mind you, I have not changed the math tables, and I have not changed any of the fuel stuff in here so far. If you look, as I just sweep through that run, the number to look at is right here. The first thing I always look for is KR, which is knock retard. And if you look at this as I sweep through this, literally zero, which I am super both happy and surprised by. So essentially, at least regular driving wise and a wide open throttle pull, and I am just, I am not seeing any knock retard at all. That's insane. I don't know why. My other car has quite a bit. So I don't know, it just is a big surprise to me. But anyway, um, so I'm going to look through these tables. Basically what I'm looking for that I'm going to be trying to change are things like this fuel trim being this far off. That lets me know that something is not right there because if the math tuning is correct, it shouldn't be having to make big corrections. And um, even although, man, I can't believe how much spark this car is running and not having problems at all with knock retard that's I mean that's a good thing I'm definitely not gonna complain about it but I'm just really surprised so okay I'm gonna get into this I'm gonna see what I can change and then we'll take it back out and see what improves or disimproves or what okay so I did some tweaking I loaded another tune went and drove it again a couple things that I've noticed so in the first data log what I saw, and this is not the first data log, but what I saw was no KR anywhere across the board, but a lot of positive fuel trim. So basically the car was adding a lot of fuel, um, somewhere upwards of like 20% in a couple spots. So 
looking at that, I was getting no KR even in the heavy pull. Now, what I did was I went and up some math numbers and stuff and I reset the long-term fuel trim. And if you look down in here, where the car's just coasting and stuff like that, I still don't have any KR and my fuel trim numbers are a little closer to normal, although they're still way high. But then up here in the, the big pole where the fuel trim hasn't had time to learn yet, so it's still at zero, now I have KR. So when I took that extra, say, 10% of fuel away, then I started getting KR. So basically that's why the car wasn't getting any um, knock retard in the first place was it was running rich enough that it didn't need it. So back to tweaking. So in addition to this just being a good modification, even on stock cars, it's 100% essential on decently to heavily modified cars because you can't expect to change a bunch of things on a car and not tell the computer what to do. Or otherwise you're just gonna wind up not really getting the best potential out of your modifications because the computer's gonna be fighting you the whole way. So it's a really awesome program. I've messed with it some, but my cars aren't that modified, so I haven't had to do much yet. As we do more though, I'll show you guys more of this stuff and what I'm gonna change there. I just kind of wanted to give you a little basic rundown of how that works and uh, what you can and can't do. So if you want more information on tuning or more information on HP tuners, drop me a comment and let me know and I will make some more videos on that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you're new here and if you're not, make sure that you have hit the bell icon so that you'll see the next time I upload. Thank you so much for watching. I have another video pre-recorded for later this week and then hopefully by next week I won't be sick anymore. So wish me luck and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much and peace.